Sam, over to you. Right, step one. Collect your autumn leaves. Good idea. Mm. To the Wiggly Podcast. You join me not on the Wiggly sofa, but in the Wiggly kitchen. Farmer Phil, what have you just had for tea? Oh, bean? I've had sausages with homegrown beans, and I think there was some spinach involved. Chard. Well, same difference. There was a yellow thing. Oh, an egg. Excellent. Um, This week, we're going back out on the combine with Farmer Phil... But first of all, here's our latest review from John P. 39200. Catchy name, John. Wiggly Wigglers, episode 206. I think he's a convict. Is that his convict number? Or he could be a soldier. Could be his dog tag number. John, tell us who you are, because Farmer Phil spent all his time worrying about this. Dog tag number. Soldiers have them. Do they? Yes. Oh. Anyway. Five stars. Thank you, John. Soldier. Uh, Weekly episode 206. (laughs) This podcast is my favourite and not just episode 206. Everyone involved is to be congratulated for the continuing top quality of the podcast, having listened from episode one. Phil, Heather, Richard and all the guests. Well done to everyone and keep up the good work. Thanks for the ongoing enjoyment. Regards, dot, dot, dot. Well, that's good, isn't it? Thank you, John. If you'd like to put a review up, we'd love you to put a review up. And you can go to iTunes and pop a review up on the Wiggly Podcast. This week, it's back on the Combine with Farmer Phil. Harvest 2010, Part 2. Part 1, finishing over a fortnight ago, and it's rained then. Now we're on to Part 2. OK, dear listener, you're coming with me. Up the yard. It's a beautiful evening on the 31st of August, and Farmer Phil is ahead, I think, with his combining. Last I heard, he's just finishing the, the grass seed, and the combine's parked in the yard, and that enormous noise you can hear is him cleaning off the last of the grass seed, ready to move into the wheat. So I'm just going to go up here by the cattle yard, walking by the Wiggly Florist Shed. Actually, I'll I'll go through the floristry. Had a really busy day today. Unfortunately, several funerals. And fortunately, lots of other more positive flower arrangements. They've got lots of status dried, drying at the moment and lots and lots of wheat and barley, which we've saved before the combine has taken it. So, uh, at the other side of there, in front of me is the header of the combine, which is on its trailer. And I can see the combine going now as if it was thrashing seeds. Cleaning down, finish the grass seed, change all the settings, change it round from doing grass to wheat. So I saw you with a big zigzag blade out on the middle of the yard. Yeah, grass seed is very difficult to cut and we direct cut it. So we always have a new knife for grass seed. What's direct cut it mean? So that rather than swath it, so mow it with a mower and put it in rows and then pick up the row, we cut it straight in with the combine. Right. And that's hard going for the combine, so you have to have a really good knife. So I have a new knife every year for the grass seed. Is the knife like a scissor? You know those pinking shears? <laughs> no, it's Does it make a it, zigzag? It, it does make a pattern on the ground, but what you have a fixed slot 
that those sharp knives go backwards and forwards through, so they cut against the fixed slot all the time. Okay, so there's a bar with one edge is smooth and the ed other edge is zigzag. Yep, so that the zigzag are the cutting sections and that whole bar oscillates left to right in the front of the knife and it goes through what are called fingers which stay still. So the crop is trapped between the zigzag bit and the finger, thereby cutting it off. And the motion of you going forward? Yes, that pushes the crop into the zigzag. So if you had a very wet crop, it could just fall over and you'd never get it? Well, that's we use lifters which go under the crop and pick it up in front of that knife so that hopefully we can cover that. I know what this is. This is having your head shaved. A little bit. Similar, so similar the sort of device. The lifters on the edge. Yes. And then that picks up the hair. It's a bit like giving the, it a number two. A number two then zigzags across it. Yep. And shaves it. Yep. Okay. Except at the end of the hair, of course, is the crop. Yes. So that's stuck in the crop. Yep. So the idea is that obviously we get the bit that you would discard as hair is the bit we want. Yes. So that then goes into the front of the combine. And then what happens? Well, then we thrash it which basically means it hits seven bells out of it to loosen and extract the seed from it. So if the seed is not ripe, it won't come out of the hole? Not as easily. The husk? Well, is it the husk? yes, yeah, sort of. And grass, no, doesn't have, grass doesn't have a husk. It's not the husk. It's different the parts do it different ways, but you've got to separate the seed from the ear. Yeah. And you get a greater or lesser amount of chaff as a result of doing that. If it's not ripe, it's much less willing to be separated. And where you thrash it, the drum, it's got a perforated underneath, so most of the seed falls down through the straw, so that you've done a coarse separation at that point. And then thereafter, you shake the straw to get the last seed out of that, or spin it, depending on which sort of combine you've got, but in ours you shake it and then you put the seed over the sieves which have got air coming up underneath so that you control your sample by a combination of the size of hole that you drop it through and the amount of air blast that you put underneath it. And I just thought you drove it up and down the field. Well that's why I've got this computer that you can see here. Yes you can see it dear listener. For your information he has got a computer just to his right that says Cleaning by blowing. So that's a, a setting set of parameters where the idea is it opens everything up and cleans as much of itself out as it can. So you can adjust the speed of the threshing drum, the speed of the fan, the distance from the drum to the concave, that's the perforated bit underneath the drum where you thrash seven bells out of it, upper sieve and lower sieve, that's the size of hole, so you can adjust that from here. Have you always had this ability, or is this... We've had these like this for the last 10 or 15 years. But not with a screen as yeah. detailed as that. Yeah. Well, does that mean that you save... What's the point of it? Do you save more seed? Well, or can you go faster and get home for tea on time? You go faster and you're more efficient. Because on the other side here, you've got a list of sensitivity settings. Now, they are the loss monitors. Now, they're telling you where you're losing your seed. And the great thing is, as you're going along, you can make an adjustment and see the effect it has on the loss monitor. What do you mean, losing your seed? Your well, seed if you is... put, say, too much wind on the sieves and you yeah. blow the seed over the back. Oh, I so see. So instead of it going, the wheat goes out with the chaff. There's the, mm. you know... The baby with the bath water. Well, exactly. <laughs> well, not really. But no, anyway. but no, no, it doesn't matter. Um, so that, and you can see the effect that you're having by your adjustments on without having to get off the machine. Now that has several really good things because as the day progresses the crop changes your requirements change. Now you wouldn't know that on a conventional old type combine you'd have to get off and have a look behind you and you might not notice that the dew was starting to come down or the crop wasn't quite as right. Why would the dew make any difference? Well the dew makes it hard to thrash and eventually it'll stop you from combining in the evening. But you can see that on here because you can see the moisture content of the grain going up quietly. You can see your loss monitors going up quietly. You can act to alleviate the problem a little bit. 
and you've also got the temperature outside. Now Which I, is today. 19 degrees C, according to that. Yeah, that's down from my Portuguese temperature. But roughly which was speaking, 37. <laughs> when we're combining the last couple of weeks, three weeks or whatever, when that figure gets down to about 15 or 16 degrees C, that appears to be about the dew point, and you'll know that the dew's coming down, and you can see it coming on the computer. So you've got various means of telling why it's not doing quite what you expect it to do. So what percentage of seed could you accidentally lose out of the bag? Oh, you, can, you can lose all of it. So if you were a contractor <clears throat> and cared about what, nothing much, you could you... get on. Yeah, could you sort of go at it a bit wild, Yes. do the job and really all the seed is out of the bag? Yes. Would the farmer ever find that out? Yes, uh, because it would grow. Would, because then you have lots of green stripes up your stubbles. Right. Now you'll see that in our barley stubbles this year, one or two, we've got some green stripes. Now that was because we had some late tillers which have got some very thin grains in them. What's late tillers? So they were green really when they came late on. So What's a tiller? A tiller is one stalk of a plant. Oh I see. And so they weren't really ripe. So instead of having them in the sample because they're not worth a lot, we blew them over the back. But of course they all grow. So that that's where you've left. So you have to some green stripes are all right, and different people have different parameters because basically how much you put over the back is a factor of how fast you go. So how much crop you try and wedge in the front of it, and if you overload it, it can't separate it, so it puts it over the back. And once you've set it up, you're driving to the losses over your straw walkers, which are the things that shake the straw because the sieves you won't lose anything over, but if you got it optimally set up, the straw walkers are the first place that you'll lose it. How long does it take to learn to how to drive this thing? Because it doesn't seem to me to be that easy, because there's The actual driving of it is very, very straightforward, and more so now than it's ever been, because you, you're not so reliant on experience and nous and all the rest of it because you've got this thing telling you all the things but as you say you have to we have operators courses that we go on but one of the benefits of staying with the same manufacturer is that you get to know how they think so that the next generation is usually logical so that you know how this one works so that when we have a new one it's quite easy for me to learn how the next one works if I got into a different make combine I would probably struggle I know the principles, but actually getting it to do what I wanted it to do would take me some time. Now, it's quarter to seven in the evening, you've finished the grass seed, many people would say, pack up, Is you know, the day's work's done, you've been out here since this morning, give up and go and have a cup of tea. We might do that yet, in as oh, much as we've still got, still got things to do in preparation, but really the problem of this time of the year is that we suffer from very heavy dews so that we don't have the option or we won't this week of going on very late at night and we can't start much before 11 or 12 o'clock in the morning because the dew is so wet and it takes that long to lift but you've been going at it for weeks and hours well we what have what sort of but day of course, would you put in the, at the, for, moment? the fortnight that you haven't been here we've not been going at it quite in the way that we would have liked to have been because it's been blaming well raining which has stopped us but this is farmer Phil's serious workload isn't it this important time of the year I mean with this machine I'm bringing in on a good day 20,000 pounds worth of crop and if I almost as good as Wiggly sale day <laughs> <laughs> so that you know at 2,000 pounds an hour an hour is an hour and 2,000 pounds if you haven't got it is a lot of money the bald fact of it is that we farm in an area where we have quite a high rainfall, notwithstanding wet harvests and all the rest of it, the windows for, of opportunity aren't as wide as they would be in a drier area of the country. But basically, you started combining, as usual, on my birthday, did, Sunday yes. the 25th of July, if anyone wants to send me any presents at all, um, and you are now at August the 31st. Where are we in the harvest well, calendar? I can tell you where we are 
in the harvest Ping. camper because <laughs> so far this year I've combined for 146 hours. Is that all? Mm. In all that time? Mm. Because well, what have you been doing? Well, it's been raining. Oh, <laughs> 146 hours. How many hours to go? Normally, we, there'll be another 100 hours to do. But actually, because the grass seed has gone very well, that it should be less than that, actually. Because we would normally have taken longer than that in terms of hours combining to do what we've done. And so, do you know how much you've brought in, in terms of tonnage? Uh, round here, where you can't see, each field is printed off on what we've done and how many tons we've got when we did it and all, all the details so there you can Does it tell you when you've got off for a wee? Uh, no. Oh well it says date stop time stopped. Yeah so that's the time that I started the field and then the time that I stopped the field how long I was in the field for and how does it know when you're in the field? Because I tell it. Oh, I see. So that it tells me how many acres the field was. Which it was. Let's have it then. 13 and a half Let's acres. have the whole thing. So I started at just a minute before two o'clock. Yeah. And I finished at half past six. Yeah. It was 13 and a half acres. I travelled six and a half miles while I was doing <laughs> it. And I got six and a half tonnes off it. Now that bear in mind this is grass seed so that figure because grass seed is quite difficult for it to measure because of the way it does it but that won't be far right? so that's about 10 hundred weight an acre which is a respectable crop that's good so no trouble with that it's telling me the moisture content was 7.7 percent and that's not actually right because this this struggles to measure the moisture of grass it's much more accurate on grain um, it tells me the average I did three and a half acres an hour and one and a half tons an hour and I achieved nearly half a ton an acre. Is that okay? That's fine. Ten hundred weight an acre, half a ton an acre. So just to contrast that with have you got a wheat one or a well, barley I one? Done any... For those of you that are not farmers, sorry about you being bored, but here we go. I've just found long field. Right, long field was barley. So I started it on the eighth of August at one o'clock. I finished it at seven o'clock. It was twenty five acres. I travelled nearly 11 miles. Very good. And I got 67 and a quarter tonnes off it. And then it will adjust that for the moisture content. So it'll tell me how much I'm going to get when I dried it. It was 15.2% moisture. And that field yielded two and three quarter tonnes an acre. So is that any good? That's fine. It actually yielded a bit more than that because the barley was heavier than I expected. But and what price is the barley at, at the moment? Barley at the moment is about £120 a tonne, plus our seed premium, which will add another £20 a tonne to it. So that's roughly twice as much as last year? Uh, the worst we sold it at last year was £80 a tonne without the seed premium. Right. So. Oh, I yeah, see. So two-thirds. It's much better. Yeah, yeah third and more. Of course, as with all these things, it's the critical bit that is better because that is the profit. You chop the top off and that's all the profit got. But this price at the moment doesn't mean you're going to get it because your seed is round the corner in the shed and anything could happen. Absolutely anything could happen. The but price? We've, we've, sent, we've sent four or six loads of barley seed and the way our price works is that we have the feed price as of the day of movement plus the seed premium which is always fixed per ton. Because you're growing it for somebody for else to grow under it. Under contract for seed, yeah. Yeah. But you could get bugs in yeah. the shed. If it, if it doesn't it get... It could heat up. If it, well, it could hopefully, compost. Hopefully. It could, it could because, be stolen. Because we've got a nice drying floor and a big fan, we can avoid all those things. And right. we clean it out so that there's, there's no bugs in the store. It's cleaned, it's treated that's absolutely fine the crop is cooled as soon as it goes in there dried if necessary so that hopefully we can keep that the sort of things that might trip us up is if it's contaminated which is usually a field contamination that there's something in there that they can't get out like wheat oh, yeah. you know something like that something wild oats things like that see if you were wigglers <clears throat> then you just sell it as a mixed wheat and barley crop well you might but the laws of the land stop you from doing that which 
you're probably right that they do, but so that puts the, the £20 seed premium at risk. It's still got the feed value to it, but that puts your 20 quid at risk. And then your feed value is, is whatever the market is at the day. So this year we're doing better. Last year it wasn't very good at all. Anything else you should show me about this combine? Where's the cool box for the... You're sitting on it, the fridge. Am I? Gosh, I'm just lifting up the seat. The fridge is massive. Is it really? Is that the fridge? Yeah. That's a good design because it used to be up there, didn't it? I've got it? another one up there. Oh, what's that one for? That's just a cool place to put a, put a bottle or something or whatever. Right. So we've got radio so I can talk to tractors. That's a CB. So we can keep track of them. Radio for the test match, very important. Weather forecasts. I wouldn't worry about it now. The Pakistanis have just done God knows what to the no balls. Allegedly. <laughs> How do you keep yourself happy when you have to get in the combine all dirty and horrible? Well, you look all dirty and horrible. Well, I'm now. dirty and horrible now because I've been cleaning. Right. But, I, but you have to. You set do off. try and keep the cab clean and keep yourself clean in order to make it a pleasant place to sit in. But how do you? What do you think about all day? Because well, you I'd to, be thinking about chocolate. Yeah. Well, you know, I occasionally have a <laughs> chocolate supply. So. But you don't take coffee. Well, it's very difficult to drink coffee on the move. You have a jug with a... Yeah, but you spill it if you're not careful. The combine doesn't stop very often, unless I break it. When we start, it carries on, particularly in cereals when we try to so unload So you don't it. get off it for lunch? No. You don't get off it for tea? No, do get off for a week. I was just going to ask you, <laughs> would you like me to get you one of those things in the hospital? What's it called? A colostomy bag. No, I can manage No, those, those round things. That, oh, the, a bed uh, pad. Yeah, no, yeah, that they you stick your... Ooh. Uh, <laughs> it's cardboard, isn't it? Oh, well, I don't know. But, but you do do that. What about number twos? Well, you don't have any of them. Oh, right. <laughs> Although we did, Mon, poor old Monty did have a problem as he hadn't got his sort of clock quite right. <laughs> and he did actually phone me up when he was moving bales to inquire what happened about such things. <laughs> so best you go home, boy. Probably. But you set off and you're out there for hours and hours and hours. How do you keep your mind happy? Well, Is it the money that's coming I can do lots the... of other things. So I've got a phone so that that allows me to conduct all the rest of the business from here. I've got radio contact with and phone contact if I need it. With so you don't phone. have to concentrate really hard. Once you've got it going, you concentrate for the ins and outs and the difficult bits, but the bits in between are not too bad at all, and then you can you can do other things then. So you run your business, and then you just listen to the radio, and yeah. it's okay. Eat. Do, do, does one tweet on um, deck? Well, is it on deck or in cab? <laughs> I haven't been. <laughs> What because is it in here? My is it in phone, cab? Uh, in cab, I suppose. On harvest? But my phone, in combine? My phone is so rubbish that it won't cope with tweeting. It's too tedious. Oh, you it. need an iPhone. Possibly. But you could tweet then? I could tweet, yes. But you don't? But I don't. Right. But and interestingly, so my combine, actually not this one, but in the past, my combine converses with the factory in Germany. So connected to its computer, it's got a phone module and so it, the, the factory can actually see everything that I can see on my computer screen so they can monitor what I'm doing. So can you put out personal messages to Helmut Class well, saying, no, great you, colour green, you Helmut? Don't, you don't have any control over it, but <laughs> oh. they can just monitor what you're doing. What, so they know where you are? Uh, yeah, th what they're doing is that they're amassing information as a sales tool and an analysis tool for their machinery. They want to see what sort of outputs I get, what sort of settings I'm running on. They can see all that just by being able to access my computer re remotely. Lastly, can you tell by the harvest, metre by metre, what gain you got from the inputs? So, if you went into a field and the left hand side of the field was going Absolutely, really well, yeah. could you work out that actually well, you drained it, you fertilised it, you yeah. pesticided it? You and although we don't do it, these combines are set up to do yield mapping so you can produce a picture which shows you that. 
Why but, don't you do that? Well, our fields are very complicated because of the type of fields they are, which makes it very difficult because they're small, they've got different soil types, they've got wet areas, you know, the, there are many different parameters with our fields. But having said that, you are right that there is mileage in it. And we do have the facility to, you can watch the yield meter, which gives you a live readout of what it's yielding right there, so that you know where the good bits are, you know where the bad bits are, because you can see the yield meter going up and down. And are those bits of the farm usually the same? You know, have you got like top well, dog field? Yeah, you've got, you've certainly what got good it? and bad fields. What's your best field? Well, some of the fields at Preston Court are very good. The fowl house field is always good. By the river? The ones by the river are good. The fowl house oh, is yeah. just over there. But it, it's the clue is probably in the name. It probably had chickens for years and years and years. And it's got an inherent fertility from that. And your worst field, you know, what is so the misgall? They're, they're usually ones which are steep, stony, wet, cold. So Do you the, leave those till last? Because no. then... You tend to grab those when you can because they're usually the ones that if you leave them, you'll never get them. So, in summary, this year's harvest so far after from the 25th of July to the 31st of August. Challenging, but all right so far. The grass seed looks good. The barley was fantastic quality without being an outstanding yield, but I'm quite happy with that. We're having a little bit of a challenge getting the last of the grass seed straw for, for the cattle because it got wet, so it needs to be turned. Um, but hopefully the wheat hasn't suffered yet, so we'll be able to go and get that now, and it'll be fine. Just a little bit of gossip. Apparently, every haymaker in the world is overbooked today. I think there is a bit of a run on balers today, judging by my contractor, John. Bit of sun. Yeah. Oh, there we are, back in the house, and Sam's stepped into the kitchen to give you five easy steps to getting rid of your leaves and making lovely leaf mold leaf mold makes fantastic soil conditioner you can reduce your peat use with it it really helps to retain moisture in the soil and it shows most of all that you're thinking ahead you are a gardener of the future because it takes so flipping long to make it sam over to you right step one collect your autumn leaves good idea mm. but did you know all <laughs> types can be mixed together mm -hmm. Except you're best off avoiding evergreen leaves. Thank you. Step two. Water them if they're dry, which helps them rot. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Step three. Pack the leaves into a suitable container. Now, what might be a suitable container? Well, I've seen chicken mesh in a square and I've seen black plastic bags. With holes in those plastic <laughs> bags. But hessian sacks work better. And they look better. They do look better. They look, they much look a lot better, yeah. yeah. And we do sell those, don't we? I think we, we might. We do. If you put in leaf bags <laughs> on the Wiggly Wigglers website, you can buy a few of those. They're awfully cheap and very nice. They come in a lovely paper wrapper. Oh, just a job. Much nicer. Also, plastic bin bags are just, they sweat. I know they've got holes in them, but they're not as good as Hessian. No. Step uh, four. Now, this is the best one. Okay. Because you ignore them for at least a year or two. <laughs> As I said, think ahead, dear gardener, think ahead. Step five is use your well-rotted leaf mould as a soil conditioner and mulch. Thank you very much, Sam. If you'd like to get hold of us, you can email me, heather at wigglywigglers.co.uk pwg at lowerblakemere.co.uk sam at wigglywigglers.co.uk and thanks to Twitter, Johnny Hot Pants on Twitter says, Great podcast, would love to natter with Rich over a few pints. Sounds like a top bloke. Think I'll stick with my lawnmower though. No, Johnny. You'll get more sense out of the lawnmower. <laughs> anyway, there we are for another week. If you'd like to go to the Wiggly website, you go to www.wigglywigglers.co.uk. Oh. <sighs> Twitter, Phil, are you on Twitter? At Farmer Phil with no E. And at Wiggled. Thank you very much. Have a lovely week. 
June says, received a big bag of hedgehog food from Wiggly Wigglers today. My hedgehogs and me, thank you. Bye. Bye from me. And bye from me. Hot news, Farmer Phil's been on the telly. <laughs> Midlands today, the BBC. Farmer Phil, what happened? Well, David Gregory, who is the science correspondent for Midlands BBC, tweeted me and said, I see you're using Twitter to compare notes with other farmers. And he did a piece on the local news on just that subject. Fantastic. Email me, heather at wigglywigglers.co.uk <laughs> Sorry, Michael. <laughs> Sorry, I dropped it. There's no tomato sauce on the microphone.